it was so much excitement in the air when they first showed off Bane Flashes. Remember when they first showed in the trailer, they teased it, everybody getting all excited because you know it's a staple of these Tenkaichi games. It's a staple of DBZ games in general. People was excited about it and then when they finally revealed it, you know of course people was going crazy. The Shattered Dimension stuff, you know that looks so cool. And then it turns out that everybody can do it. <laughs> and that's kind of the problem that people are having with the beam flash is that everybody can do it. If you look at this, you got Super Vegeta and Yamcha. <laughs> Yamcha shattering a dimension with Super Vegeta. Now Super Vegeta, he can, you know, he is Super Saiyan. You know, his form, he powerful, all that good stuff. But Yamcha sitting here shattering a dimension, it's like, get out of here with that. <laughs> like, to me, it's not really that big of a deal. It ain't that deep. But I understand why people don't like it. And I can say I think they could do a better job of, like, separating the two. Like, you can have all the powerful characters be able to shatter the dimensions and then characters that don't really you know they not as powerful like Krillin, Roshi or Yamcha or something like that they should have a regular beam struggle they that's what they should have no shattered dimension at least that way it makes the shattered dimension stuff feel special rather than you know just everybody being able to do it so if you look at uh, Xenoverse 2 for example if your character is extremely powerful and they just idle as you see the rocks the pebbles or whatever is just coming up not every character can do that this is only reserved for the characters that are just extremely powerful which is a very nice touch now if you look at Yamcha he don't nothing like that happen. you know of course when he power up you know Rockstar kind of coming up and all that but by itself nothing and that's like a, that's a pretty cool detail that I think a lot of people overlook well probably don't overlook it this game like a million years old at this point but it's a real nice feature you know to just kind of further illustrate the characters that are powerful and the characters that are just not as strong they weak <laughs> Now one thing for sure I don't like is the camera angles. The camera angles for the beam clash on this game, it just looks so ugly. Like, you're going to look at the older DBZ games in a minute with, with a beam clash, but this one, it don't show, you don't even see who winning. Like, the beams don't go back and forth. It's just like they just right in the middle. The only way you figure out who wins, besides looking at the bottom of the screen, is like the animation at the very end. But you don't see the actual struggle between the beams. You know, so just take a look at Ultimate Tenkaichi, for example. Ultimate Tenkaichi, as much as people claim on this game, this game actually did some pretty cool stuff. Besides the gameplay, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but just look at this. Like I said, no other gameplay. We can clown on Ultimate Tenkaichi for the gameplay, but outside of that, they did a lot of things right, like I said. But the beam clash, you can literally see it's an actual struggle. Not that whole rotating camera garbage they got going on in Spark and Zero. They, they need to change that. They've been updating the game. That's something they need to update. And I hope they had an earth shattering stuff like that in Spark and Zero as well. Ultimate Tank Aichi also has some really good destruction. I give him that. But I think this game, y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all think. But I think this game probably did Beam Struggles the best, honestly. Especially because of the after effect. Once, you know, whoever wins, once it's over with, you see that big, you know, destruction behind them and things like that. And you get a clear view both characters you know shooting their beams and trying to you know win and then you see the the actual beams going back and forth that's missing in spark and zero 
So hopefully, you know, the game is a little like what two two ish months away. So hopefully we'll see some updates to the beam clash. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but thank y'all for listening. I ain't gonna hold y'all too much longer. Let me know what y'all think about the beam clash. Take care. I'll see y'all in the next video.